Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome. Now, in a previous video, I talked about the benefits of vitamin D and how to get enough vitamin D either through diet or through supplementation. Now, in that video, I talked about the way that vitamin D works extremely well with vitamin K to produce some excellent results. So in this video, I'm going to cover in more detail the benefits of taking vitamin K and in particular, vitamin K2 with regard to uh, bone health and keeping calcium in our bones, in our teeth and out of our soft tissues like our kidneys and our blood cells. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and look at the benefits of supplementing or ensuring you have enough vitamin K2 in your diet. As you may know, I started this channel to record my NMN experiment. But within weeks of getting into it, I realized that taking NMN as a daily supplement was not going to be a silver bullet. There are many other things that are key to extending our health span. So as well as NMN supplementation, I will also continue to make videos like this on other subjects that track my longevity hacks, if you like. This video on vitamin K2 is the third, vitamin D and hyaluronic acid were the first two. The next will be on magnesium. That said, let's get into vitamin K2. Very few people have actually heard of vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is rare in the Western diet and has not received much mainstream attention. However, this powerful nutrient plays an essential role in many aspects of our health. Many scientists believe vitamin K2 may be the missing link between diet and severe chronic age-related diseases. So what is vitamin K? Well, vitamin K was discovered in 1929 as an essential nutrient for blood clotting. The initial discovery was reported in a German scientific journal where it was called coagulations vitamin, which is where the K comes from. It was also discovered by a dentist called Weston Price. He traveled the world in the early 20th century, studying the relationship between diet and diseases in different populations. He found that the non-industrial diets were high in some hitherto unidentified nutrient, which seemed to provide protection against both tooth decay and chronic diseases. So let's look at vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. These are the two main forms of vitamin K. Firstly, vitamin K1. This is found in plant foods such as leafy greens. Then we have vitamin K2, which is found in some animal and fermented food products. Vitamin K2 can be further divided into several different subtypes, the most important being MK4 and MK7. So how do vitamins K1 and K2 work? Well, vitamin K activates proteins that play an important role in our blood clotting, our calcium metabolism and our heart health. One of its most important functions is to regulate calcium deposition. In other words, it promotes the calcification of bones and prevents the calcification of our soft tissue, such as blood vessels, kidneys and our heart. Some scientists have suggested that the role of vitamin K1 and K2 are so very different, they should be classified as two separate nutrients. This idea is supported by an animal study that showed vitamin K2 reduced blood vessel calcification, whereas vitamin K1 did not. Controlled studies in people also observed that vitamin K2 supplements generally improve bone and heart health while vitamin K1 shows no significant benefit. However, more human studies are needed before the functional differences between vitamin K1 and K2 can be fully understood. Let's look at heart disease. Calcium buildup in the arteries around our hearts is a huge risk factor for heart disease. Therefore, anything we can do to reduce this accumulation may help prevent heart disease. In one study, which spanned 10 years, people with the highest intake of vitamin K2 
were 52% less likely to develop artery calcification and had a 57% lower risk of dying from heart disease. Another study in 16,057 women found the participants with the highest intake of vitamin K2 had a much lower risk of heart disease. For every 10 micrograms of K2 they consumed, the risk of heart disease was reduced by 9%. That said, it's generally agreed that more long-term controlled trials of vitamin K2 and heart disease are needed. Moving on, let's look at bone health. Vitamin K2 may help improve bone health and lower your risk of osteoporosis. Osteoporosis translates as porous bones and is a common problem in many Western countries. It is prevalent among older women and strongly raises their risk of fractures. As I mentioned before, vitamin K2 plays a central role in the metabolism of calcium calcium being the most abundant mineral found in our bones and teeth. Vitamin K2 activates the calcium binding actions of two proteins, the matrix GLA protein and osteocalcin. Both help to build and maintain bone cells. A three-year study in 244 postmenopausal women found that those taking vitamin K2 supplements had a much slower decrease in age-related bone mineral density. Let's take a look at some Japanese studies. Long-term studies in Japanese women have observed similar benefits, although very high doses were used in these cases. Out of 13 studies, only one failed to show a significant improvement. Seven of these trials, which took fractures into consideration, found that vitamin K2 reduced spinal fractures by 60%, hip fractures by 77%, and all non-spinal fractures by 81%. In line with these findings, vitamin K supplements are now officially recommended for preventing and treating osteoporosis in Japan. Let's now look at dental health. Researchers have speculated that vitamin K2 may also affect our dental health. However, no human studies to date have tested this directly. Based on animal studies and the role that vitamin K2 plays in bone metabolism, it is reasonable to assume that this nutrient impacts dental health as well. One of the main regulating proteins in dental health is osteocalcin. This is the same protein that is critical to bone metabolism and is activated by vitamin K2. Osteocalcin triggers a mechanism that stimulates the growth of new dentin. This is calcified tissue underneath the enamel of our teeth. So let's talk about uh, cancer. Unfortunately, as we know, cancer is a common cause of death worldwide. And even though modern medicine has found many ways to treat it, new cancer cases are still on the rise. Therefore, finding an effective prevention strategy is vital. Two clinical studies suggest that vitamin K2 can reduce the reoccurrence of liver cancer and may increase survival times. Additionally, an observational study in 11,000 men found that high vitamin K2 intake was linked to a 63% lower risk of advanced prostate cancer, whereas vitamin K1 had no effect. That said, it's widely acknowledged that far more high quality studies need to be conducted before these claims can be made. So how can we get vitamin K into our diet? Several foods are rich sources of vitamin K1, but vitamin K2 is less common. Your body can partly convert vitamin K1 into vitamin K2, and this is useful because the amount of vitamin K1 is typically 10 times that of vitamin K2. However, current evidence suggests that the conversion process is inefficient, and as a result, you may benefit much more from supplementing with vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 
is also produced by gut bacteria in your large intestine. Some evidence suggests that broad spectrum antibiotics can contribute to K2 deficiency. Vitamin K2 is mainly found in fermented foods, but unfortunately, most people don't eat these types of foods nowadays. Rich animal sources include high fat dairy products from grass fed cows, egg yolks, as well as liver and other organ meats, which again, most people tend not to eat nowadays. The benefits of supplementing with K2 may be enhanced even further when combined with vitamin D3 as a supplement, as the two vitamins have a very strong synergetic effect. So if you're interested, let's have a look at what DoNotAge.org is selling with regard to vitamin K2. They're selling 60 capsules for £15 sterling, which is about $19.30. And each capsule has 120 micrograms of vitamin K2 and 5,000 international units of vitamin D3. Uh, please watch my video on vitamin D and why you should try to take D3 and K2 together. It also contains 250 milligrams of magnesium and I'll be posting a video on magnesium very soon. So please watch out for that. If you use the discount code MYNMN, you get 10% off. So you'll be able to purchase it for £13.50, which is around $17.30. Well, I hope you found that interesting uh, or informative um, or both. Uh, as you know, on this channel, uh, I'm not recommending that you do what I do. I'm just simply recording what I do so that um, I've got a record for myself and hopefully it benefits uh, anyone that wishes to watch it also. Uh, so at the moment, you'll know that I do take vitamin B3, vitamin K2 and magnesium. Um, and in the next video, I'm going to cover magnesium and the way that magnesium is very important to make sure that vitamin D3 in particular can do its job. Uh, so that's it for today. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope to see you again soon. Take care and bye for now.